Hello my dears, welcome to my channel, I am Sora and today we are going to talk about comparing planes and human systems. Remember that both human and planes need energy and gases of the air like the oxygen gas to survive and grow. Here we are comparing between the planes and the human in how to get energy and how to get air. In the plants, you know that plants make their own food in the photosynthesis process. The food of the plant called glucose sugar. So plants in the photosynthesis process make their own food, the glucose sugar, and then the plants use the glucose sugar to get energy. Super. So to get energy, plants make or manufacture their own food, the glucose sugar, through photosynthesis process. But the human, to get energy, human must eat food. So, you must eat food through your digestive system. How? You put your food in your mouth and then you start chewing the food in your mouth. Then you swallowing this food through the esophagus. Then it goes to your stomach and then into your intestine and in the small intestine the nutrients is absorbed into the blood so in the human to get energy human must eat food through digestive system how through chewing the food in the mouth then swallowing then nutrients absorption into the blood how about the air how plants get air we said before that in the leaves of the plant there is something called stomata and stomata are opening or pores which allow the gas enter. So gases enter the plant leaves through the stomata opening or pores. But the human, the air enters the human body through the nose and the mouth. Then the air travels to the lung where the oxygen gas is absorbed into the circulating blood. So when you breathe in air from your nose and your mouth, the air will travel to your lungs. And in the lungs, the oxygen gas in the air is absorbed into your circulating blood. So this is the human circulatory system. The human circulatory system, it is the system that transports the blood and other fluids throughout the body. So, the human circulatory system, it is the system that transports the blood and the other fluids throughout the body. The human circulatory system consists of the heart, this is the heart, and blood vessel. The blue and the red one, they are the blood vessels of your human circulatory system you can call them vessels or tubes so the human circulatory system consists of heart and blood vessels we have two types of blood vessels or blood tubes the blue one are the veins and the red one are the arteries so we have two different types of blood vessels which are arteries and veins these blood vessels transport the oxygen gas and the neutrons through the blood to the body cells. So, we said that the human circulatory system is the system that transports the blood and other fluids throughout the body. This blood transports the oxygen gas and the neutrons. So the blood vessels transport the oxygen and neutrons through the blood to the body cells. As you can see here, this is the human circulatory system. This is the heart and this is the lung. When you start breathing air from your mouth or your nose, the air reaches the two lungs. And then the lungs start to filter this air. And then the oxygen gas is absorbed to the blood from here and from here and then reach to the heart and then this blood which is reached in oxygen and neutrons pump it into the whole body cells and then the blood return to the heart through the blue vessels the veins but now this blood carries the carbon dioxide gas and low amount of oxygen and low amount of neutrons 
after it comes to the heart, it bump it to the lungs, and then the lungs filter this blood again and take the carbon dioxide and release it out from your nose again. So human circulatory system has arteries and veins and the blood moves in only one direction in pulse. This is called one-way vessels. You can see your arteries and veins through your skin, in your arms or in your hands. This is your veins. If we compare between the arteries and the vein, we can say that the arteries carry the blood that reach in oxygen gas and the nutrients, the glucose, from the heart to all the body cells so body can grow. But the vein returns the blood from the body cells that reach in carbon dioxide and low amount of nutrients and oxygen gas from the body cells back to the heart, then to the lungs where the blood carries oxygen again into the arteries. It is a cycle. Now we're going to talk about plant's transport system. This is the plant transport system. As you know, the plants need energy to grow like human. Plants also have transport system like the human. Human have one-way vessels, the arteries and the veins. Also, plants have transport systems that have one-way vessels. We have here two vessels in the plant, xylem and phloem. The xylem move from the roots to the leaves and the xylem transport the water and nutrients. So, the xylem transport water and nutrients from the roots to the leaves. But the phloem transport the food materials from the leaves to the rest of the plant. This is the plant transport system. So if we compare between the xylem and the phloem, the xylem carry water and nutrients, the phloem carry food materials, the glucose, sugar. The xylem carry water and nutrients upward, but the phloem carry the glucose, sugar downward. The xylem carry the water and nutrients upward from the roots to the leaves to make glucose in the photosynthesis process, but the phloem carries the glucose sugar downward from the leaf to the rest of the plant to grow. Here we compare between the plant transport system and the human circulatory system. Both plant transport system and the human circulatory system have system of vessels to transport water and nutrients and gases. Both have one-way vessels. The plant transport system, it is a system of vessels or tubes called xylem and phloem that transport different materials around the plant parts. But the human circulatory system, it is a system that consists of heart and vessels, the arteries and veins that move blood around the body parts. In the plant transport system, the xylem carry water and nutrients upward from the roots to the leaves to make the glucose sugar in the photosynthesis process. But the phloem carry the glucose sugar, the food material, downward from the leaves to the rest of the plant to grow. But in the human circulatory system, the arteries carry blood that reach in oxygen gas and neutrons, the glucose, from the heart to all body cells, so body can grow. But the veins carry the blood that reach in carbon dioxide and low amount of neutrons and oxygen gas from the body cells back to the heart, then to the lungs, where the blood carries oxygen gas again into the arteries. Have one minute break. And then let's continue our lesson. If you remember the photosynthesis process to talk about the plant food, the plants roots absorb the water and nutrients from the soil, then it carries this nutrients and water to the stem through the xylem, then to the leaves. In the leaves, the chlorophyll substance absorbs the sunlight energy and the air enters the leaves through the stomata opening or pores and this air contains the carbon dioxide. 
Then the sunlight helps the combination of water and carbon dioxide in the process of photosynthesis to make the plants food the glucose sugar. So the sunlight helps the combination of water and carbon dioxide to make the glucose sugar. We said that the photosynthesis need water, sunlight, carbon dioxide to make the food of the plant. During the photosynthesis process, the light energy of the sun transformed or changed into another type of energy called chemical energy. The chemical energy found in the glucose. So, in the photosynthesis process, the light energy of the sun transformed or changed into the chemical energy that is found in the glucose super. The glucose then moves in the phloem from the leaves to the rest of the plant to get energy to live and grow. So glucose moves in the phloem from the leaves to all plant cells to get energy to live and grow. Also during the photosynthesis process, the plants produce oxygen gas and water that are released to the air. So the water is a vapor and all living organisms use this oxygen gas in the respiration process. So in the photosynthesis process, the plants produce the glucose sugar, the food of the plant, and also release oxygen gas and water super. Now we're going to talk about flowers of plants. Some plants have large colorful flowers, as you can see in the picture. And some other plants have very small flowers, like grasses. And some flowers are in very colorful. As you can see, the flower is green like the leaves. Flowers are the reproductive parts of many plants. What is the meaning of reproductive? Reproductive, they mean the seeds or the babies of the plant. Flowers produce seeds or the baby of the plants for the plant that help the plant to reproduce. When the seeds receive the air and water in the correct temperature, then they can grow into a new plant. They can grow into a new plant when, when they receive air, water in the correct temperature. Super. So reproduction process is, it is the process of making new plants. Reproduction process, it is a process of making new plants. Do you know that in the sunflower, the seeds are the small, dark colored object in the center of the flower? This is the seed of the sunflower. Remember that plants use their food to produce flowers, which are responsible for reproduction. So, plants make food and then they grow a flower, then the flower makes seeds, then the seeds make a new plant. So, what is the difference between xylem and phloem? The xylem carry water and nutrients upward from the roots to the leaves to make glucose in the photosynthesis process. But the phloem carry glucose sugar downward from the leaves to the rest of the plant to grow. What is the circulatory system? Can you tell me? Super! So circulatory system, it is a system that transports the blood and other fluids throughout the body. And it consists of heart and blood vessels and two different types of blood vessels, which are arteries and veins. Super! Can you tell me what is the reproduction process? Super! So reproduction process, it is the process of making new plants. Buffer yourself. This was our lesson for today. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Goodbye.